name is Cameron Burke, and this video is going to introduce you to how to apply the nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism to hydrolysis reactions. In earlier videos, I explained each step of how the mechanism for base-mediated nucleophilic acyl substitution works. Go back and review the in-depth details of the mechanism if you need to, because this video is going to show you how that base-mediated mechanism can be used to create carboxylic acid derivatives. This video is going to demonstrate how to hydrolyze an ester using a base-mediated nucleophilic acyl substitution, allowing you to create a carboxylic acid, but you can also use this exact same mechanism to hydrolyze the amides and anhydrides. Any hydrolysis reaction mechanism is going to have two steps, as indicated by the 1 and 2 next to our reagents. Step 1 is a base-mediated nucleophilic addition and elimination. Step 1 requires that you have an ester and a base. Just like in earlier videos covering nucleophilic acyl substitution, the carbonyl carbon is going to be super excited about grabbing these electrons. At the same time, the carbonyl carbon can't hang on to five bonds, so it'll break one of the bonds with carbonyl oxygen. This is going to create a tetrahedral intermediate. Now that you've created this tetrahedral intermediate by adding a hydroxyl group, you're ready to finish step one of this hydrolysis with an elimination. Here's how it's going to work. For starters, our carbonyl oxygen is carrying a negative charge. The carbonyl carbon is having its electrons stolen by not one, not two, but three oxygens. So carbon is going to be pulling these electrons back into a double bond. However, carbon isn't going to want to have five bonds. So the oxygen with the most carbons bonded to it is going to be the most electrophilic. And that oxygen is going to be the one that takes its electrons back from carbon and goes home. Once the most nucleophilic oxygen breaks its bond with carbon, this is temporarily going to result in a carboxylic acid. But you're also going to be left with the methoxide ion, which is incredibly negative. And it's going to act like a strong nucleophile and snatch the closest proton, which is the hydrogen currently completing our carboxylic acid. So the reaction isn't quite finished. At the end of the first step, you've added a hydroxyl group to the carbonyl carbon, creating a carboxylic acid and you eliminated a methoxide ion. But the methoxide satisfies its need for protons by stealing a hydrogen off our acid. That means you made a happy methanol, and that's what you can see in the product of your reaction. So we're done with methanol for now. But our carboxylic acid is now a carboxylate, and that needs some help. This brings the reaction to step two, which is protonation. We're gonna add some acid to protonate the carboxylate, creating our final carboxylic acid product. Once you add some protons to the reaction, the carboxylate is going to snap it right up, and the carboxylic acid will be happily electrically balanced, and your final product will have transformed an ester into a carboxylic acid and a methanol. To summarize, you can use base-mediated nucleophilic acyl substitution to chop up amides, esters, and anhydrides in order to turn them into carboxylic acids. A typical base-mediated nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction always has the same mechanism, so if you can nail down the first step consisting of an addition and an elimination, you'll be able to explain most of a hydrolysis reaction. If you remember to protonate as your final step, you will have created a carboxylic acid. Thanks for watching!